welcome to Mission to Inspire. We've got our wonderful guest here with us today. His name is Sean, Sean Calton. Hi, Sean, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Sean, Sean is all the way from United States and he's joining us today. And he will be talking about a few things. I'm not going to dive straight into it so because I want you to actually listen all the way through. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave it to Sean to introduce himself properly and let us know him better. Ah, okay. So, well, uh, who I am uh, in essence is that uh, professionally, um, I'm a personal trainer and I am also now, you know, a digital creator, a digital entrepreneur, whichever you want to call it here. So um, I have a, a Substack account, a publication online it's called Samo Lives, Samo, S-A-M-O Lives. Uh, it's the name of the publication. It's part of a larger digital company that I have called Dark Age Media. Um, and yeah, so it's just really a platform for myself. I also run two podcasts, three podcasts, really. Three. Uh, yeah, three, really. Uh, the biggest one, the one I spend the most time with is called Fitness Reborn with Sean. It's a fitness-based podcast. It's been going on for two years now. I just crossed over to 100 episodes. And so we just kind of dig into all things pertaining to fitness. So whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, hormonal, um, what have you here. So it's generally geared towards an older audience. So 40 years old and 40 years old and above is usually who we're targeting to or who we're speaking to. Okay. Um, and there's two other podcasts that are smaller. Uh, one, the other one is called uh, Word Vomit, which is just a solo podcast of me kind of, just kind of talking for maybe about 20 minutes on anything. You know, people throw me questions. I answer them three, four questions, and I spend about 20 minutes answering them as I see fit or as I see it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is called Dear DSM. Um, Des Moines, if those of you who don't know, Des Moines is the capital city of the state of Iowa where I live. Okay. Um, so it's a celebration of the city and the people who make it what it is. I think it's kind of an undis undiscovered gem in the Midwest in terms of you know what it has to offer the world in terms of uh, music and history and uh, I think it's a happening place and I like I said I think it gets overshadowed by some of the larger midwestern cities like St. Louis and Chicago, Minneapolis, that kind of stuff. Wow. Um, and yeah, so you know so I guess to, to kind of put it all together here to cut it short here, I'm a, a mad podcaster. Mm -hmm. I've jumped into this podcasting space and I've mm -hmm. kind of devoted my publication to that and other things, but mainly to podcasting and building other podcasts as well. Right. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. That is so cool. So about your transformative voice in media, right? Mm -hmm. Can you share your journey into that? Well, the... <laughs> I don't I don't know how transforma transformative it really is at this point here, but like like I said uh, before, I jumped into podcasting about two years ago, just really kind of on a whim. I had a really? uh, personal training. Yeah, really. I mean, I was on a I had a personal training business, and I still technically have it, even though I don't work with it too much. Okay. And I thought and I thought the uh, podcasting was kind of a a neat little adjunct to what yeah. I was already doing. You know, because okay. I always kind of held it out there. It's like, I don't know everything. I know quite a bit, but I don't know everything. And there's yeah. so many people out there who know so much more than I do. So if I can contact them and talk to them mm -hmm. um, and actually have conversations and dialogue and relationships with them, uh, that would benefit me as a trainer right. and benefit them as my students. Yes. So I thought it was a very kind of a neat way to kind of also kind of build something in addition to what I was already doing here. And it really just kind of subsumed it really uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, I started one, I, my first couple episodes were really kind of solo podcasts. Right. Like it was kind of like what I'm doing with word vomit right now. It's just like mm -hmm. me talking and maybe spending about 30 minutes talking. I didn't, I decided that wasn't very exciting listening okay. to one voice the whole time. Mm. it's it's a lot more interesting a lot more dynamic to actually have another person involved yeah. it just kind of like it's much more entertaining because you have uh two people using each other as kind of like uh you know as soundboards 
and just ricocheting back and forth. And there's a dialogue and it's much more interesting. I think podcasts are much more interesting with guests involved. So I got guests involved yeah. and it just kind of kept growing from there. And they just, you know, um, and like I said earlier, I just crossed over into a hundred episodes. I defied a huge statistic saying I was never going to get that far uh, because most people just quit. You know, uh, podcasts, podcasting, it seems like it's everywhere. It seems like it's something that everyone just does, but it only seems like that. Uh, most podcasts, once they start, they quit pretty early because um, it takes a lot of work and it takes dedication and it takes a sense of purpose in doing it. And if you just kind of do it, willy nilly then yeah. i don't think you're going to i don't think you have a very strong base that's true and you know it's something that you know there's not a lot of money in it for the most part there's really no money in it for the most part so if you don't enjoy what you're doing here then chances of you continuing to do it two years down the line is pretty much non-existent that's true that's true <laughs> <laughs> well you just nailed it there there's no mm -hmm. so much money in it but then mm -hmm. there Money in it. Um, it depends on how you you go along. You go along with it, right? Yeah. Um, so, what inspired you to create Dark Age Media? Uh, well, I mean, I decided oh, then as you've got like three, like three of them, your podcast, right? Right. But, yeah. Right. So on the media, um, the Dark Age Media. They're all they're all um, under the same heading of Dark Age Media. So Dark Age Media, since I do have this podcast, and then I decided because I'm addicted to podcasts, and I was going to create two more podcasts, and that's just kind of <laughs> how my mind really works. Here is like, oh, that's a great idea. Let's do that. That's a great idea. Let's do that. This is just kind of like, you know, though if you know, you know. Um, that's how it works. The, the ideas are crazy, and you just kind of jump into it. And it's very exciting. But then I decided, you know, I need something it would kind of make sense if it didn't look like just kind of a, a sporadic, you know, cluster of podcasts here and there all being hosted by the same guy. If it was part of something larger that kind of had a philosophy and had a, had a, had an ethos, mm -hmm. then uh, it made a lot of sense and it kind of just kind of came together. And this is kind of like one place you could find, same with the publication, same ellipse. This is kind of like the one place you could find all this stuff, where it originates, where it uploads, where you can get, if you are subscribed to the, the publication, where you can get like a front row seat to it when it first uploads before, you know, it gets sent out everywhere in all different directions here. And some stuff like if you're a paying uh, subscriber, you will have privy to versus someone who is not, you know, um, contributing financially. So, uh, it just kind of, it just kind of made sense to kind of put it under one sort of one roof and have it part of the same, like I said, the same overall philosophy. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. That is interesting. So how mm -hmm. do you love doing all three? How do you divide yourself? How do you do it? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, I loosely... I loosely divide my time on it. I mean, uh, Fitness Reborn is very structured because it's older. It's it's uh, established, if I dare use that word, established. Yeah. Um, I have far more commitments to people. Like, I have appointments going out now stretching into September um, of people I'm supposed to meet with. And it's much more structured and disciplined. And so I know I have to be at a certain place, certain days of the week at a certain time to talk to someone in particular right um it's very uh it's very mature that way hmm. dear DS, dear dsm and word vomit are not that sophisticated they are not that uh structured they are um i do it when i feel like it really <laughs> or when i can get someone on um because they are so much younger and they're so less uh, established i have to work much harder to find people to come on yeah. um i have to I, you know i have to do a lot more groundwork there's a lot more hustle in there mm -hmm. whereas with uh fitness reborn because it's on pod match like you yeah. uh because it's on pod match there's already uh kind of an assembly line machinery involved here that gives me a regular stream of clientele and content mm 
mm. to where I can regularly pump out uh, and one episode per week and have done that consistently for the last two years. Wow. So, you know, so if you are a regular listener to Fitness Reborn, yeah. you know, you know that, you know, every week at some point there will be another episode, there will be another guest, there will be another topic mm -hmm. and we will go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, because Dear DSM and Word Vomit, again, they're not quite so well put together. It's very sporadic. And especially now, because I've got all kinds of things going on in my personal life right now. I'm in the middle of a move. I'm trying to switch cities here and stuff like that. And so Fitness Reborn, because, again, it's so well engineered at this point, it's much more easy for me to stay on top of that. Exactly. Whereas I have to be very settled and in a certain uh, frame of mind mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to really, to really be, uh, chasing after more material for dear DSM and, and word vomit right. than fitness reborn. Right. Okay. Okay. Wow. So let's talk about the fitness reborn then. Um, mm -hmm. let's talk about that for, for a little, um, how do you actually, so I know you said you identify them on, on pod match, right? So you you do you then um identify and select them on pod match how do you do it is that what you do well okay. yeah that's yeah that's what i that's what i especially early on i mean i was very feverish about um contacting people because you know how pod match gets you it gives you these potential matches yes and they drop it on you about you know batches in what, what do they call it Batches and threes or something like that. That's, you know, matches and bat matches and batches. That's what he called it. Mm -hmm. Alex, the founder of pod match matches and batches. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of people that according to whatever algorithm they use, Hey, this matches with you. Maybe you want to send them a line, see if they are receptive. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was doing that a lot. I haven't really done that in months now because I got so many people and even outside of pod match, I've got people and their representatives sending me emails saying, Hey, we found you. We thought I'm thinking that my person I represent would be a good match. Mm. Let us know what you think. Here's their, here's their bio. Here's their background. Let us know what you think. Um, and to fight match does the same thing. Uh, sometimes it's a good match. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes it is a good match, but there's also the fact that, you know what? I think I've been down this road enough times already and speaking to other people, I don't feel like I need to go over it again. So maybe later, but not right now. Right. Okay. So there, there, there's, there's a lot of that too. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot, a lot of a duplication. It almost seems of, you know, people who come across, who come across, come across your radar, mm -hmm. and want to talk about certain things. Like, well, I've talked about that already in the last episode or in the last couple episodes. I think we've kind of covered that ground pretty well. I want, for, I want to look something a little bit different now. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really haven't sent out any messages right. because I, I got such a full, I got such a full calendar now. Mm. And, and uh, I got messages coming in for me at this point so i don't know I, I don't really feel the need to do so so much but if i find someone that i think is really cool i'm gonna send them a message also for sure okay okay so your dear is it dear d d dsm so you know the um uh kind of the the acronym i suppose for des moines uh, uh, is is dsm yeah, so yeah. Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa is DSM. So I threw in the little E there just for uh, branding purposes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So no, that, that's why. So yeah. <laughs> so how do you get? How do you get? Yes, on that one. Well, what, what was that again? Sorry, you kind of broke up. Guest on the uh, dear DSM. How do you guest get guest on that? How do I get guests? Well, really just kind of organic um, searching, really, like through 
um, Facebook, social media groups, word of mouth. Like I said, it's, it's, uh, not, it's not very well, it's not very well structured. So I have to do a lot of the early groundwork, like, which is what I did with uh, uh, Fitness Reborn back in its earliest days. Yeah. So it was, a lo- it was a lot of like, all right. And that's how I found the guests that I do have on. It's like, all right, uh, I joined these groups. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I find people on there that are posting interesting things. Mm-hmm. Or I put out a post there. I Maybe I asked one of the administrators, hey, can I ask – for some of these people in these groups, um, if they want to be on this podcast or not, it's all about Des Moines. Mm. You know, most of the time they say yes. Yeah. Uh, just, just as long as it doesn't get too carried out of hand, like, okay, one post, but don't put out one post a week. Don't spam our group. That's kind of, that's the one thing we don't want. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a, and there's a lot of that you got to kind of work around too, because now with social media, uh, spam artists and spammers and people who just want to go into groups and cause trouble. And I've had, I've run into this myself too, running groups on Facebook, like people who just want to post stupid stuff just to kind of like get a rise out of people. Um, so the people who were the administrators of these groups, they are very much uh, hypersensitive, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so you have to kind of tread lightly, otherwise you risk getting banned. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's really that's how I do it. And word vomit is kind of the same wave, although not quite so much with social media. It's more like listen to the podcast. Here's my email. If you have other things you want to hear my input on, if you even care, or you just like, and I keep it wide open too. It's like I don't care what it is. It can be stupid, you know. It's just a it's just a fun podcast, really. I'm not taking it seriously at all, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, it's about engagement, really. That's what it is about. Either way, whether it's on entering groups on social media, sending messages, putting posts out there, putting your email out there, podcasting, anything mm-hmm. like that. It's all about engagement. It's all about finding an audience and saying, hey, you know, talk to me if you want to know something or if you're interested, if you want me to hit on something in particular, you know, it's about an open dialogue. It's about a free democratic uh, space. That's what it's about. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you discuss um, a particular guest or episode that had a profound impact on you as a person. <laughs> Particular guest or episode have a profound <laughs> impact on me as a person. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I have to switch search back. Who was I really? Oh, okay. All right. I got one. Okay. So and this is probably about two years ago. This is in the early days of Fitness Reborn. I had this woman on, and her name was Heather. And, and again, I found her through, not through Podmatch, just like, I, I don't remember what group I was in or whatever. I just put out something on there. I think it was like, you know, people 40 or 50 older or whoever, or women in fitness or whatever you want to call it. Hey, I have this fitness podcast. If you have a story to tell, you want to come on, on, mm-hmm. let me know. And she answered. And so we, uh, arranged the time to speak and she had never done a podcast before ah. ever. she had never done a podcast before she had never done anything like this before mm. so she was completely green and fresh and because of that she was totally authentic too like there was no she didn't have a media kit to give me or anything she didn't have a press kit she didn't have a rep she was just a, a regular person who had a fitness story right. which i thought which i thought was perfect right. um and she she came on there and she just really, she bled her heart out. Like no holds bar. She told me everything. Like she held nothing back. There was no sense of, I, if she was timid and nervous, she didn't come across that way because she really did open up her entire soul to me on my podcast. Right. Um, she talked about how she was in an abusive relationship with a 
with a husband that had a maniacal temper Gosh. for so many years. And she, because of that, she had put on all this weight, over a hundred pounds of weight mm. because of all, all the stress mm -hmm. that she was under, uh, all the stress that her, her son was under. And she finally did get away. Right. And the way she and the, and the way she got away, the way she finally broke away, because this is this guy was abusive. He's controlling, right? She can't just leave. Very, she can't just say, "Okay, I'm leaving you." Mm -hmm. You know, you you leave someone like that, you are risking mortal danger, because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, people have tried doing things like that, and what ends up next is that they get killed, like literally trying to because they don't want the person to leave, so they turn violent. And, and so that's why they say it's not as easy as saying to someone just leave. No, it's not. You know, you're, ta you're talking to someone who is now probably a broken person. Exactly. Leaving, leaving, leaving takes courage. Um, and if you don't have very much courage, it's just not that hard. It's not that easy to leave. Mm. Um, but the way she left, and she yeah. told this to me, the way she finally got out, her father was diagnosed with stage four brain cancer. Oh. Just out of nowhere apparently like mm -hmm. seemingly like one day he was fine next day boom brain cancer mm -hmm. and he's on his way out there's no there's no coming back mm -hmm. so she was at her father's house and he i guess apparently he told her hey this is because he knew what she was living under full full well it's like hey this is your ticket out you can say that you have to stay with me because my cancer and take care of me. You can you can use that as a justifiable reason to leave. And he won't think twice about it. So now you can say that you have to stay with me, take care of me because of mm -hmm. my cancer for an indefinite amount of time, or at least until I die. And that's your ticket out. And that's how she got out. Oh, wow. And that's how that's how she got out. That was the uh, that was the story he, she told him to get mm. out of the house and say, I have to move in my parents and take care of my dad because he's dying. Mm -hmm. And then she just and then after he died, she just never left. So that was an escape route, though. Yeah, uh -huh. that was the escape route. Mm. But then she did something worthy for our dad at that time. Mm hmm. Wow, that's a very touching story. Oh my God, oh my God. That is so right. touching. Mm. So I can see yeah. how it have an impact on you. Yeah, yeah, it had a real impact. And she, like I said, like the best podcasts I have are people that feel like they are open and free and safe to open up to me. And, you know, subsequently the people they're going to end up talking to when I release the episode. Mm -hmm. Um You know, when you feel like when when you when you kind of just take command of the mic and just kind of go for it and don't wait for me to kind of prod you along. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, a lot of people act cagey and they're insecure. And mm. um, but the people who really just sort of go for it, which she did. Wow. wow. Um, yeah. are, are the best guests. And it turns out it's one of the best episodes. And at the time, it was the highest rated episode I had. Are you hard. Um, yeah, because it, it just it just blew up everywhere. Oh my god! Um, yeah, and uh, so you know, her life after her father's death, after escaping the household, yeah, she began working on herself, losing the weight, mm -hmm. starting with short little walks around her neighborhood, getting okay. more conditioned to that, mm -hmm. and then eventually going into other things like lifting weights, mm -hmm. you know, more intense cardio, jogging, walking becomes jogging. Mm. Jogging becomes biking, you know, lifting weights, you know, and it's just like, yeah, you know, it's mm. like, uh, it just kind of keeps spiraling, which is my, which was my experience with fitness in my adult years is that it just kept expir spiraling into one thing after the other, after the other, and it just becomes an addiction and you just love it. And you love the kind of the thrill of the hunt, so to speak, of mm. finding more ways that you can kind of shape and test your body. And I still have her on social media and she's still like lifting weights and stuff like that. A while back, she finally managed to deadlift about 300 pounds. 
Mm. Um, and she's got these reels going and that, you know, that are inspirational reels and stuff like that. And again, she's kind of giving herself over to our audience saying, Hey, this is where I was. This is where I am now. This mm -hmm. was the journey, that kind of stuff. But yeah, she was, she stands out in my mind as one of the best ones I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. What are the challenges that you face in bringing forward stories? Cause I presume you must have listened to a lot of stories and then bringing them forward. I mean, mm -hmm. what are the challenges that you faced? Yeah. Um, like I said, like some people, you know, especially if they're new to podcasting, they are kind of low key and seem like they're almost reluctant to even be on the podcast or even speak, or they just kind of like, or maybe they worry about saying too much. Or I don't know. I mean, you get the gamut. You get the people who are very economical with their words. And then you get people who are just like, <laughs> they just, they, they, they jump into it right away. They, like you can't, I have to fight to get a word in as I, as we transition into different areas, because they will just keep going on and on and on and on. It, it's, it's fine. It really is. But, you know, I do have to kind of keep, keep track of time here. So everyone doesn't get inconvenienced by running over. <laughs> before we go on can i just ask this question how can people yeah. contact you if they want to if, how can they contact me yeah um so my facebook is sean with two n's s-e-a-n-c-a -N -N that's my facebook uh you can dm me on that if you like i also have an email address sean.carlton00 gmail.com you want to shoot me an email go for it Mm -hmm. uh, Instagram handle is your host Sean again with two N's S E N N your host Sean on Instagram again shoot me an email yes. uh, but if you want to see my work uh, look up my Substack account it's Samo Lives Samo S M S A M O Lives <laughs> on Substack that's where my work is it's also you'll see pe you'll see contributions from other people too. Um, I just helped a friend launch her own podcast, The Plunge with Saray Majak. Uh, she's a, she's into the, it's a fitness based podcast. She's got a lot of passion for fitness. Okay. I, I prodded her along for a long time to get her to start her own podcast. And finally she did. We worked on it together for months and episode one just came out, uh, about a week ago. Uh, it's tracking very well. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's the best ways you can see you can contact me or you can see a lot of my work and a lot of the people I work with uh, mm -hmm. is through the Substack and through the social media and the email. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what do you believe is the most significant change needed in today's media to truly, to truly, truly impact lives? And how is your your publishing, um, you know? contributing to that change your dark cage media how is it contributing to that change well the biggest change i see with the media and media outlets is the fact that too much of it is controlled by a small consortium of people uh -huh. um and that's the biggest at least in american media that's the biggest thing and so the, the mainstream media outlets that we all know about like cnn msnbc fox news um, they are all handled and controlled. And a lot of smaller publications are all kind of controlled by a lot of the same people. Um, and it's just become a big, it's become kind of like a big, uh, almost like a big cabal right, okay. of people, of people who, you know, could probably all fit in one boardroom who control mm -hmm all one bedroom at least oh. <laughs> you could probably who control so much of telecommunications mm -hmm. and and media um media information or disinformation however you want to characterize it mm -hmm. at least in, in the united states i don't know what it's really like in the united kingdom but yeah. in the united states um i have the feeling that it's pretty similar though because i know that for sure like, rupert murdoch Cool. Right, yeah. Rupert Murdoch has yeah. his hands in everything. Yeah. So, and I I do know he has infiltrated British media heavily. So, <laughs> um, 
so that is, I think, the biggest problem right there. And because of that, we, I think now we are seeing an emergence or a surgence of independent media outlets. Yeah. And Dark Age Media is really just kind of like one of it. Oh, that's uh, good. And, and we all kind of like, we all kind of like, uh, we all spearhead the same thing here. Mm -hmm. Because we see a lot of like, and a lot of this has to do with things like uh, censorship, which comes in mul multiple forms. It's not just in podcasting, but also in books. Like yeah. my home state, the legislators in my home states are now in the process of mm -hmm. banning books a lot in schools and things like that. Mm. So independent media, free, open, democratic media, mm -hmm. I think is probably the biggest thing that we can really hope that is going to provide some, somewhat of a remedy to what we see is happening in the larger media outlets here. Okay. Will it ever get to the point where it really can kind of break up the conglomerate? Yeah. Who's to say it's, it's a, it's a long ways off because you're dealing with a lot of very powerful people who have a lot of resources here. And right now the only resources that say people like you and I have is each other. Yeah. And, and things that we've got right now, just the little wherewithal that we have right now. Like we have internet access, yes. we have computers, we yes. have microphones, mm. and we have a voice. This is what I told Saray when she launches her podcast. It's like, this is huge. Mm. You know, it really is too, because now you've got a, you now you've got a platform mm. and a voice. Yes. And you can send it literally anywhere. You can send it through Apple, Spotify all these different other um, dis distribution networks mm -hmm. here, you know, the RSS, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you can, you can literally take it anywhere and send it anywhere. Um, and anywhere you send it, someone clicks on it, boom, there you are. There we go. Sure. So it's, uh, it, so it's, it's huge. And dark age media, dark age media, I think, want i want to i want to kind of represent and spearhead that in as much ways as i possibly can dark age media is kind of a kind of a little a little a bit of a, a stab at the media system because mm -hmm. and my emblem which was my fitness company emblem is da vinci's universal man now you contrast juxtapose those two elements together here it really makes something interesting because da vinci Yellow Da Vinci was the epitome of everything that was anti dark age, anything, right? You know, yeah. he was the height of the Renaissance period where yeah. there was all kinds of changes in Europe, at least all kinds of changes to science, medicine, uh, literature, art, that kind of thing. And when you put it again with something like the dark ages, which is the very antithesis to that, yeah. You know, you know, it's when everything in Europe ground to a halt. There was nothing really coming out of the uh, in Europe in the Dark Ages. Uh, yeah. So Dark Age media. What I want. So the uh, contrasting elements of Da Vinci's Universal Man, Leonardo Da Vinci himself, with mm -hmm. the Dark Age period, is meant to be kind of a knock against the media system itself, though, because for as for as advanced and sophisticated as it really is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really kind of very not it's very kind of it's very kind of barbaric and mm -hmm. it's really kind of retrograde okay. and i think it's actually an erosion mm. to the advancement of humanity rather than uh a uh a helper i guess <laughs> that's the best way i can <laughs> uh, the best way i can characterize it yeah <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. I've enjoyed every bit of our conversation. Is no there any uh, advice or inspirational advice you'd like to give our audience out there? Yes. So a lot of people have ideas to start podcasts. A lot of people have things they want to say, things they want to do. They think they have valuable, worthwhile things that they want to contribute. If you are one of those people, great. Then Stop sitting on your ideas and take some action. Right. So, I mean, podcasting, it's not overly complicated, but it is intimidating. I do know that. Mm. Um, 
you think you have to have so many things in place. You think you have to have all your ducks lined up just perfectly in order to get it going. No, you don't. Yeah. And know that when you first start out, it's probably going to be kind of a mess anyway, because you're just starting to get your feels for it. Um, I'm two years into this. I still get somewhat jittery when I get online and talk to somebody, no matter how prepared I am. Um, Cause you know, I talk to a lot of really smart, accomplished people and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, you know, they could talk circles around me about certain things. I try to keep up as best as I can. Um, so don't get caught up in the weeds of, well, I don't have this. I don't have that. Focus on what you do have. If you have internet access, which most people in the first world do have, if you have internet access, you have an idea, uh, you have a microphone, even if it's just in your computer, you have a way of getting into it. It's very open and out there for people who want it. Yeah. Uh, you just got to get out of your own way. And I will say too, because I've been around this block a couple times now, I'm pretty uh, well experienced with it. And if you have this idea and if you want some help, I will help you get it off the ground here. Okay. All right. And so just kind of reach out to me at my email, sean.carlton00 gmail.com, or reach out to me on any one of the social media outlets I spoke of before, Sean2NCA on Facebook, your host, Sean2Ns on Instagram, DM me. Mm-hmm. Let's get your idea going. Let's, let's, uh, let's fight this battle together. Right. Thank you so much. Now, on that, because I know mm-hmm. that one of these challenges and struggles that people have in podcasting mm-hmm. is yeah. monetization. Right. So if they start, they want to know, can they monetize it? <laughs> How can they monetize it? They just right. Don't want- <laughs> sure. And I will, I will be perfectly honest with you. I've not gotten very much monetization out of my podcasting. Um, but there is obviously ways you can monetize, monetize. Um, and honestly, if you get on Podmatch, they give you a pretty good, uh, tutorial on how you can, uh, monetize and you'll hear from people who have actually successfully monetized their podcasts. Yeah. Um, but you know, obviously endorsements, if you have a large enough audience mm-hmm. advertising, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, those are probably the two most main ways, uh, mainstream ways of getting monetization through podcasting. Um, but like I said earlier, it really has to be much, really more of a labor of love. And you really do have to cultivate it's a, a large enough following and yeah. audience mm-hmm. for anyone to really see that it's worth them putting any endorsements on your podcast because obviously they want it to reach a certain amount of people and the, and the right amount of people too. Yeah. So monetization for sure, it is a possibility, but don't think that jumping right into it, that you're going to be able to monetize. It's just not, not really, that's not really, that's not reality. That's not the, that's not the case unless you're already a celebrity in some other regard. Um, it's not likely just going to be an automatic monetization. So do it, do it, do it because you love it. Do it because you think it's fun. Do it because you think there's a purpose for it. And don't concern yourself with just making money from it. You just nailed it there. Thank you so mm-hmm. much. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for having me on. It's been Thank fun. You for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it no from today from Mission to Inspire. Thank you, everyone. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Like, follow, comment. Until next time. Goodbye.